Well, Andrew, uh, let me ask you, first of all, is this one of the raciest subjects that you've ever tackled for the nature of things? For the nature of things, <laughs> yeah, certainly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, it, it is, uh, I guess race is the right word. Um, you know, that when Median Andrade, Dr. Median Andrade from University of Toronto, she suggested this idea and she suggested calling it bug sex. And um, I, I'm, it occurs to me that there's this new movie called Cocaine Bear, and there's that other movie called Snakes on a Plane. Bug Sex kind of fits into that. Uh, you know exactly what it's about. <laughs> when you hear the title, you know exactly what it's about. <laughs> well, it's interesting, uh, uh, you know, covering this topic, because I, I think we all experience bugs at various times of the year and even during the winter they appear in the yes. house quite magically has yeah. anybody ever taken time to calculate just how many bugs in the world there are well that's we say as we say in the documentary there are an estimated 10 quintillion that's a I, lot i don't even know what a quintillion is <laughs> neither do i i don't know like in the order of billion trillion like when do you get to quintillion I'm <laughs> But um, yeah, and and the thing is, is as we say, they all need to have sex, right? It's all about moving the genes forward. So even though it is a racy title, and we actually have a lot of fun with this story, uh, at, at, its, at its root, it's a story about evolution. And evolution can happen so much faster in bug world than in mammal world. And so much faster that, at, at, as we show in the doc, you can actually see it almost happening in real time. Isn't that incredible? And, yeah. and interestingly... Uh, the different varieties of bugs have different ways of having intimate relations and and they're so diverse it's unbelievable and um we don't even think i don't think we've even scratched the surface of what's out there um one of the things that we explore in the film is about um how much is known about male bugs uh mating behavior and the males are are the ones that tend to have the you know the the ornamentation and they do the dances and and I think most people are aware that in some species of spiders the male puts his takes a risks his life to have sex uh, he can be eaten by the female, but what what we found is that a lot of the a lot of the expertise on the males on the male uh, bugs is because men dominated biology for decades and decades. Now that more women are involved, we're finding out so much more about female behavior. And so it's opening up a whole new avenue. And that's why I say we don't even know the half of it, <laughs> because there's so much more left to explore. Uh, the uh, a program has a number of special guests that are talking about these various bugs that they've been following. And I found it rather interesting that there's a lot of husband and wife teams involved. <laughs> How does I that know. happen? <laughs> it, it, the, you, you, you'd hope that it would be some sort of really amazingly romantic idea, but it, it happens because they're stuck in the labs together for years on end doing their PhDs. <laughs> There's nobody else around. <laughs> so, 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 so many times that people pair up. But yes, I think we have three, three couples in the dock that are all, and they're all out there, experts in bug world. There's one couple from the uh, University of Toronto. Maybe you could uh, tell us, what will we see and what are they up to in the documentary? Well, Median Andrade, Dr. Median Andrade is at the University of Toronto Scarborough. Uh, she's a Canada Research Chair as well. And um, she did her original PhD on the, on the sexual cannibalistic practices of black widow spiders. So she's, she's sort of, <laughs> she, she was a real, she's our story editor too. And and so that's her um, area of expertise, and and then her husband Andrew Mason, um, they're actually they actually have adjacent labs at UTSC. He's a, a, an ecologist and an animal uh, behavioralist. And one of the most amazing things he's done with Median spiders is um, he's rigged up this system where there's a web. The females got a web. They put the male on the on the web, and he starts to move towards the female, and then he'll grab the web and pluck it like a banjo string and what andrew mason has done is figured out a way to to use a doppler laser effect to turn that into a sound oh my goodness so we can actually hear and see the male uh brown widow in this case sending a message 
by the plucking to the female saying, I'm here for sex, not for dinner. <laughs> and, and, and it's all about communication. So these are, these are the kinds of discoveries that are being made all the time. And it's just Andrew's brilliance to be able to, you know, rig up this, this system in his lab in a soundproof room and record. It adds this a, a, a whole new level of understanding the communication system, far more complex than we would imagine way more complex yeah and there are different several different ways to communicate that you sent um uh the female black widows on vancouver island that we filmed they they, they send a scent out into the air um, um and the males all come running but they're careful about it because they have they don't want to get eaten right so, so it's this it's this constant sort of dance that goes back and forth and of course in those cases the female is upwards of a thousand times bigger than the male I didn't realize there were black widow spiders out on Vancouver Island. I there are black widow spiders at Lake Simcoe. Wow. Yeah, and they're endemic. They're not introduced. I'd always thought that um, they came in on bunches of bananas, you know. Uh, yes, but no, yes. They're, they're, they're from here. Now, yeah, one so of the two main uh, colonies in Canada. One of the couples uh, are doing research in Hawaii, which is not too shabby a location. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what, what are they up to? Well, that that's the story about that's the, the the most startling and amazing story about evolution that we have uh, in our in our in our documentary. What they it, it's Marlene Zook. She's from the University of Minnesota. Uh, she was at a conference in Hawaii in the nineties, and while she was there, she wanted to. She was on Kauai, the island of Kauai. She wanted to go and look into these oceanic field crickets, um, and um, she found a bunch of them, a bunch of males, but they weren't making any noise. Anybody, especially in your neck of the woods, you know what it's like in the summertime with the crickets and the yeah, cicadas. Yeah. Yeah. But if you can imagine it, all of that going totally silent. And she couldn't figure out what was going on. So she started to look at the little males. And what was happening is they were sending out a mating call by rubbing their wings together like all crickets do. But it was also drawing in a parasitic fly. And the parasitic fly would bomb these males. It would hone in on the sound, the mating call sound, and drop these little sticky larvae onto the males' backs. And the larvae burrow inside and basically turn the males into zombie crickets until maggots burst out. So that's not good for the the health of the male population no. and what happened over the course of 20 generations which is really only five years they they mutated so that their wing structure literally changed and they can no longer make a sound anymore They're, they've gone silent wow in response to this threat but now there's a new problem how do they find a mate so that's so that was originally in the 90s on the island of Kauai, uh, and Marlene has been tracking it across the other islands um they about 50 percent of the males in Oahu um now have this mutation and we found the first ones on the big island so we were lucky enough to find the very first mutations on the big island but it's that's, happening there too that is really outstanding it's incredible it's an incredible and, story that it happened so fast now all these stories that you cover um i'm sure we're going to see some amazing photography as well uh, some of these uh interactions these intimate lives if you will uh, capturing that on camera must have been a, a bit of a, a challenge for your team. It, it, looking back, it went way better than it should have. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I, we we were uh, we were we were filming in Alberta, and and we were at, in the evening we had TV on, and it was uh, uh, Attenborough's one of Attenborough's BBC Nature shows, and. There was a scene of these uh this 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 these uh carpenter ants in the in the rainforest all this line of them and it was the way that they were showing how they shot it and that this the budget for that one scene was more than i had for my entire documentary and so i made every I made them we turned it off i didn't want to look at it but we did travel with this really amazing macro lens and that's what we it it it, it saved our bacon over and over and over again and we're literally it's like 4k widescreen spiders coming into your living room and crickets and flies <laughs> and uh you also have uh a, uh a biologist called catherine scott uh on the show what yes uh, yes yeah, she's a black widow expert herself and um she her area of expertise is uh on on that beach uh, near saanich on vancouver island she's actually been she spent so much time there that she's been able to come back year after year and do a biographies of all the spiders there like she she's sees them from year to year 
Um, they mark them with a little bit of paint, and so she knows who they are, and she's able to tell their stories and and try to figure out how many how many um, uh, spiderlings the females are are laying. Um, so it's an amazing concentrated story on one beach on the west coast. So that's what that's what she's been working on. Also, um, we've got a few internet extras as well that we're going to be posting on our okay. uh, on our website. And she tells a story, not in the film, but in the internet extra, what it's like to be bitten by a black widow spider. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, she accidentally got bitten once. Ouch! And, ouch! Yeah. One of the bugs that uh, we most commonly interact with, and actually, I think I might have a couple of them around right now, yeah. are f- fruit flies. Right. And they're pretty fascinating, from what I, I understand. Uh, people will see uh, how fruit flies have sex. Yeah, the thing about fruit flies is um, they'll, as the scientists will tell you, um, they're, they, they, of all the bugs, they're the ones that will most reliably have sex on command. Um, you can just like, you can just get them. So there's been a lot of work. Actually, David Suzuki himself, this is one of his last... Um, documentaries that he narrates you know he he started his academic work on fruit flies and fruit fly mating um so it's it, you know this there it's not new looking at them but what is new is pe- scientists are starting to study fruit flies to see if they experience pleasure and um the argument is that that it makes sense that nature makes sex pleasurable because it's how the genes move forward it makes you you know want to go and do it and so they've done a bunch of experiments, which we get into with the fruit flies to see if they like it or not. And apparently they do. Um, they like booze almost as much because they, they're attracted to sugars. So um, they found with fruit flies, if they get rejected, much like humans, they'll go get drunk. <laughs> but, but given the choice between sex and booze, they'll take sex. So when I put out a little bit of rotten fruit and there's fruit flies all over it they're they're actually rewarding themselves they're either rewarding themselves or drowning their sorrows one of the two (laughs) one of the two and i'll never know which (laughs) (laughs) now from all this work that that you've done andrew you and your team um what is the what is the takeaway from a program such as this for us as viewers entertaining as it is there must be some sort of underlying takeaway from it. The, we, our notions of sex, about the purpose of sex and what sex is, are very narrow <laughs> when compared to what's going on in bug world. Um, there are so many, as one of our scientists said, there are so many different ways of doing it. Um, there are nuptial gifts where um, a, a certain breed of cricket has a, a little sort of divot on his back, and it's it's just, it's like this... Uh, it's like this this sweet soup that the females eat while they're mating. It keeps them around. Other males will bring them dead bugs. Um, the fruit, the the uh, dancing flies that we film on the Credit River near Georgetown. Um, the females, the only way they can eat is by a male bringing them food. And they're they it's with the dancing flies. It's the females that put on the show to attract the males as opposed to the males. So it's it's sexual role reversal. And and they they swarm for an hour at night. The ma- the females do. It's like a it's like a show. That's why they call them dancing flies. And the males wait all around on the different bushes, and then they'll pick the one they like the best, and they mate in the air. But he also gives her a dead bug to chew on while that's all going. On, you know. And then there are spermatophores, which are these. Um, it's it's like a little packet of sperm that's encased in a in a in a shell, and it gets transferred and sort of woven into the female's reproductive tract. And then once it's there for about half hour, the, 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 the container, the spermatophore, just squeezes the sperm into the female. So the, and then when it's done, the female eats the casing. So it just goes on and on and on. Um, a female black widow spider will have hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of spiderlings just based on one, one sexual encounter. I guess uh, for uh, the layman, such as I, when I'm looking at a bug, I shouldn't underestimate the level of complexity that uh, even a a fruit fly can go through in order to carry on the the species. It's it's yet another uh, awakening for us to understand that nature is far more complex than we give it credit for. 
Oh, there's some, there's some, I mean, with a fruit, a male fruit fly, the, uh, his sperm is 20 times the length of his body. Goodness me. So the, the, the amount of energy required to produce that and then use it and then produce it again, maybe, you know, in his short little life. Um, it's, that's, that's a big part of what I learned is that all of these different sexual practices and, and stuff, it all takes energy. And, and, and these bugs have to be as efficient as possible with, with the energy it takes, right? You can only, you can only put out so much without taking something back in. Yeah. 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 So it, it's, it's incredible. It's almost like, it's almost like there's an arms race going on all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and evolution is always there. Sometimes the females, um, 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 reproductive tracts will change to make it harder for the male to be successful. So then the male's genitals will have to change in response to that. So it's just, it's like, that's what I say. It's like an arms race. It just keeps going. Well, if, if really you want to be a bug biologist studying sex, there will never uh, be a lack of subjects. Well, and I, I, I think one of the uh, reactions to all the work that your guests had, have been undertaking is that they're being surprised by what they're learning as well. Oh, they yeah, realize that, how little they know. Yeah, I, Anita Eisenberg, who we, we filmed with her in Uruguay, um, she found a species of wolf spider. Wolf spiders are really common there. But she found a species, of, once again, sexual role reversal, where the male actually digs a burrow in the, in the sand dunes and the female comes to visit. And she's the one that does a dance and shows off. And she'll crawl down into the burrow. Um, she's also checking out the burrow to see if it's a good place for her to have her babies. Um, and if the male accepts her, then everything's fine. But if the male doesn't like her, he'll eat her. Wow. And uh, um, you'll see that in full graphic detail. <laughs> I think I'll stay away from that nightclub. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andrew, thanks for joining us today. It, it's going to be a, a, an exciting program. And uh, once again, on Nature of Things, you brought something new, fresh, and really fascinating for us. Thanks for joining us. Oh, I, pre I always love talking. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye for now. Bye for now.